Connor thing. Uh, it seems like that fight's going to be at 170, though, and I guess that's where people are maybe you know, debating. Could he even make 155 now mm -hmm. is one question, and if it's at 170, maybe that's where the argument of would he deserve it at 155 would come in. What would be your response to that, I guess? You know, it's uh, at the end of the day, it's uh, you know, it, it is Conor McGregor, and you know, when you pull on those types of uh, numbers, and you got to remember, he is always taking on uh, the the good guys as well, like the the good fighters. So he's always uh, stepping up and taking on on dangerous fighters. So, and it's at one seventy. You're right; it's not the f uh, lightweight division. Look, if it was anyone else, I'd say there's no way, right? So, like, uh, I'm just, you know, it's it's pretty. It's pretty obvious uh, how it goes down, you know what I mean? So um, you're not really saying anything that anyone should be surprised about. Yeah, I think we all understand. Yeah. And uh, the, the parody between your last fight with Max, who has absorbed the most strikes in UFC history, and Islam, who's absorbed the least in UFC history for the amount of fights he's had, um, like what's the dramatic difference in preparation for two guys like that and knowing that one might be harder to find? Um, I always find them, though. Right, that's 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 my thing. So uh, it is definitely different. You got to approach it right because you can't get uh, too carried away because we know he wants to shoot as well. So that's what's good about him. He is patient. He will stay on the outside. Uh, you overcommit, he'll make you pay. You know, if you overcommit incorrectly, you know it can be a, a long night for you. But uh, obviously, I'm a calculated fighter. That fight IQ is uh, definitely going to have to come into play. Um, I need to turn up. You know, this isn't a fight where I can just come in and ah oh, yeah, we'll see what happens. I need to be on my game. Uh, but I'm always on my game. You know, I always prepare how I should, and uh, you're going to see me turn up, and uh, I plan on uh, raising two belts at the end of it. And you win this fight, it'll be a 13-0 UFC start for you. The only other fighters who have done that are Anderson Silva, Kamaru Usman, and Habib Nurmagomedov. What would it mean to you to kind of join that group of elites? Oh, man, it's, uh, you know, it's awesome. You know what I mean? Like, I've joined a couple of, uh, of cool things, right? Like, you know, being a champion is incredible, and being a... Uh, uh, pound for pound, number one is obviously incredible. Then going champ and champ, uh, champ, champ, uh, and then the streaks and all that type of stuff. It's it's a pretty good resume. It's pretty good uh, numbers there, and uh, I guess that speaks for itself. Thank you. Hey, Alex, just curious, man. I wonder, like, how much do you think Habib's dominance uh, has sort of affected people's like respect and fear of Islam's wrestling? Like, because they see Islam as like the next incarnation of Habib, and because of Habib being so dominant, I wonder how much some of like Islam's past opponents have looked at that, and that's translated mentally. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's pretty obvious that they've got a, a strong ground game. You know, they, they do have a, a certain style, a uh, very good MMA-specific uh, style, and uh, people haven't been able to capitalize, not capitalize on or, or, or deal with or figure that out. Um, they're, you know, you got to tr you got to train uh, how you meant it. You got to prepare uh, for these guys properly. Because again, if you're just going to go there and just think uh, you can just do anything you do in a jiu-jitsu room, uh, you need to you need to change it up. You need to study these guys, study their movements, uh, details. I don't think uh, I could be wrong, but uh, I don't think uh, other teams or other fighters uh, did enough of that. Uh, but we always do that. We always uh, you know game plan properly, prepare properly, uh, and always prepare for the worst. So uh, no matter what happens in there. I'm not going to be shocked. I'm not going to be puzzled. Or, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm going to be going for it the whole time. And again, if there's anyone for a job to figure any puzzle out, I'm the man. I, I truly do believe that. And I get to show that on, on Sunday. I wonder, what, if anything, has Dan Hooker said to you about uh, Islam, just his strength and just what it was like being in there, if anything, surprised him? I haven't really ha had that conversation with him, to, to be honest. Uh, uh, I haven't. Uh, obviously... You know, he got, he got caught. You know, we got uh, what uh, Islam did a great job of of catching the the leg as he went on top and then got into a dominant position and 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 got there. You know, there's not much uh, you can uh, really uh, do about that. Obviously, again, we we know uh, Islam's good. Uh, I haven't really had that conversation to be honest with you, but um, yeah. But uh, again, I got a, a lot shorter arm, so I'm I'm a lot harder to Kamora. <laughs> Even though your arms are longer than his, I wonder. Yeah, that's actually yeah. In in the countdown, I'm sure that we've long arms here. My bad. In the countdown, you mentioned how you, your whole life you've been dealing with stocky arms, stocky arms. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's what I'm looking at. You, the whole life you've been dealing with monsters of men, and obviously the narrative here is like you know the size yeah. difference. And I just wonder, like, when was the first time in your life that you took out a significantly you know bigger dude? Maybe even before like your professional fight career, or just you you realize you had that ability in you. Oh man, <laughs> that's been happening forever. You know, it's been happening forever, even on the footy field, all that. Like, a lot of people are like, oh, he's moving up. Like, it's like crazy. It's like, I'm training, like, every day in the gym, in the gym uh, with guys uh, 
heavier than me. You know, this is lightweight. I train with like welterweights. I train with uh, even middleweights sometimes, you know what I mean? Especially in the grappling and war work and all that type of stuff. Uh, wrestling, like these are the guys I, I, I'm usually grappling and, and doing them stuff with because the guys my size are obviously usually going to struggle with me there. So I usually got to go with the bigger guys. That's why people are keep mentioning the power uh, and size. It's not that. I, I look at it more... Uh, the the thing that to deal with is is their style, you know what I mean? Like their their grappling ability, they do certain things. Um, you know, that's that's more of something that I'm looking at. Like not power. No one's ever just overpowered me, you know what I mean? Like uh so uh again if they, if he thinks I'm just gonna be some weak little uh, featherweight then he's gonna be in for a rude shock.